Okay. <laughs> that's you, better. Are you in jail? Okay. No, that's supposed to be a cool room. All right. Hold on. Are you in an interrogation room? <laughs> yes. All right. Let me let me switch that. Now you're in a nightclub. No, it's not a no. It's a <laughs> newsroom. Look at all the. T- okay. Hold on. <laughs> Mm. There we go. Mm. Oh, now you're the cracky on it. Late night. night. Show. Yeah. yeah there show. we go. Yeah. Where's Jimmy Fallon? <laughs> Welcome to the Impact Defense Podcast. We are dedicated to giving you the information that you need to help keep you safe. Now let's join our hosts, Brian, Jada, and Kylie. Hey guys, and welcome to the Impact Defense Podcast. Today we have a good friend, instructor of ours. Uh, Tim is on the podcast. Uh, Tim, if you don't mind, uh, tell a little bit about yourself. Sure, I'm Tim. Uh, I spent 23 years in the Navy, so I'm a retired uh, Naval vet. I was a small arms instructor and uh, did some pretty cool stuff in the Navy. Uh, right now, I run Cornered Hill Firearms Training, which is in uh, North Carolina. So if you're looking for any training, look us up. And I met Brian probably probably about a year ago, right? A year or so ago, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, a little more than around there. Yeah. And uh, so we started chatting and uh, done some classes together and stuff and got a good buddy out of it. So there you go. I appreciate that. You have good buddy status. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's not get carried away. Okay. <laughs> you don't said it. All right. So I do not have a news story for today, but <clears throat> we have Tim here and we were thinking that it would be an awesome way for you guys to get to know him by letting him tell a training story. Okay, so hopefully I don't go too far on this with the language. Okay, so we'll see what happens. If but so, I'm Kylie also will an edit. NRA, NRA. What's that? I said, so Kylie will edit you out. Yeah. Okay. I'm also uh, an NRA training counselor as well as a USCCA um, instructor. So for the NRA, I'm not only a training counselor. I teach. Uh, Pistol, rifle, shotgun, personal protection in the home, personal protection outside the home. I'm a range safety officer. I teach range safety officer, chief range safety officer. So but pr- pretty much whatever they have, uh, the NRA can still carry, teach it all, right? And uh, I'm going to tell you, the NRA is a great, great, great organization when it comes to training. Uh, I'll just throw this out real quickly. So uh, if Alec Baldwin would have spent less time bashing the NRA and taking a class, I think that woman would still be alive. <laughs> All right. There. So when I teach uh, my RSO and CRSO classes, I always teach my students. Uh, remember this one phrase, and that is dumb abounds on the range. There, it, your mind cannot think of the dumb things that your students are going to do out there on the range. You, you, you can't conceive it because nobody normal thinks that way. Right. So I'm running a class one day. And this is just a uh, typical uh, concealed carry class. It wasn't NRA, it wasn't USCC, it wasn't anything. It was just, just a class I'm running. So I, I got a bunch of people out there and I restrict my students to two students on the firing line per instructor. Now that's an NRA policy when you're running NRA classes, but I have always found that to be a great standard to stick by because as an instructor, you really can't control more than two people because you only have two hands, right? No. So we're out there on the firing line and the dumb three just never ends. One guy, I'll give you two real quick ones. One guy decided he needed to adjust his headset. So with his gun in his hand, he decides to start reaching up and grab his headset and try to adjust them. Needless to say, it didn't take me long to grab that hand and throw him off the range. All right. <laughs> the other one was one guy. Uh, I had two instructors out there. So we had four people on the firing line shooting. And one guy had decided, I've finished my shooting, so I'm going to go check my target, while the other three were still shooting. So it didn't take me long to grab his dumb by the shirt, jack him back, and throw him off my range. So, guys, most people are really good out there. Most people are really safe. But then you got those that if you do this long enough, you're going to run into them. It's it's true. People don't. I, I'm amazed at how many people do not think about stuff like that. Um, I can't, I don't know how many times I've had guns pointed at me as an instructor oh, and, gosh. and they go, people go, Oh, well, it's, it's not loaded. It's like, do you listen to the entire first portion of this class that we teach? You know, we're going to treat every gun as if it's loaded. 
Uh, that you and, always assume all guns are loaded. That yeah. is number one in gun safety. And in one case, I knew without a doubt that the gun was loaded. And the guy pointed at me with a finger on the trigger because and I knew it was loaded because I knew how many rounds he had put in the magazine and I could see the loaded uh, round indicator was up. Right, right. The chamber indicator. Chamber anyway. indicator, yeah. So, yeah, I, you know, I, I was telling a class just this last weekend when I was teaching concealed carry, I said, uh, you, you know, you, you might think that it's not loaded. And even if it's not, you're what you're doing is you're building this into your system where you're going to treat a loaded gun as if it's not loaded because you think it's not loaded. And you're just you're going to at point some point in time screw up. So when I'm going over the gun safety rules with my uh, students a lot, uh, one of the gun safety rules is, um, it, it, well, I'll, I'll, of course, always assume all guns are loaded, right? Yep. So I ask them, what are the only types of guns that kill people? Do you guys know? Uh, the only type of gun that kills somebody is one that is unloaded and had the safety on. Okay. Those are the only two types of guns that kill people. Because inevitably, whenever somebody kills someone accidentally, there, in my opinion, there's no such thing as a gun accident. It's all negligence. But whenever you have somebody kill someone accidentally, it, it, is, it, it is always, here's the story you're going to hear. I don't know how Jimmy died. That gun was empty and safety was on. You will hear that every time. So those are the only two types of guns that kill people. Un the guns that are safety's on and unloaded. Yep. Yep. It, uh, unfortunately, that kind of stuff happens all too often. If someone is considering uh, using a firearm, I've had several people come through. They are not gun owners. They come through classes and they come through and take a class because they want to start to integrate a firearm into their self-defense plan for their life. What's your opinion on this? Do you think that everybody should have a gun? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's jump oh right. God. I am going to get trolled so badly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. We so, get it. It is everyone's right to own a gun. Yep. It's everyone's right to own a gun. I would never say you don't have the right to own a gun. You should not own a gun. But there are people out there that should not own a gun. You know, I mean, <coughs> but I would never take that right away from someone to own it. But there are people yeah. that are just so stupid and so negligent with their firearms. They really don't need to own one. Yeah. But I'd never take their right away to own it. Yeah. So I don't know if that answered your question. <laughs> it does. And actually, I think you said that exceptionally well, personally, uh, because I feel very much so the same. I think, you know, the, the freedom that we have as a nation, uh, I'm, I'm all for it. But there are some people that come through a class. and I think, no, you probably should not have a gun or maybe you have a gun, but maybe you shouldn't carry a gun. You know? Yeah. So that, that's another thing. Uh, now, we're just going on statistics here, right? Mm -hmm. So statistically, the average concealed carry encounter occurs within 21 feet. Yep. And so the average person can cross that 21-foot threshold in 1.5 seconds. So you have to consider this when you're thinking about employing a gun as a personal defense strategy. At best, at that 21-foot distance, you have one and a half seconds to do this. Yeah. Decide I'm going to kill this person access your weapon, draw your weapon, put your weapon on target, and then kill that person. Yep. You have one and a half seconds to do all of that. If you are not out training multiple times a week, you're going to fail. And by fail, I mean one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to die or you're going to kill an innocent bystander. Yep. Yeah, I feel like we're, we're, we're being awfully negative here at the beginning. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, the truth is, I think that it's it's a very serious thing. And I think that people need to take it seriously and people just don't too often. Carrying a firearm is nothing to be taken lightly. Exactly. It, it is a huge risk. Owning a firearm is a huge responsibility. But carrying that firearm, ugh, you, when you are carrying that firearm out on the streets in public, you are accepting a huge responsibility. You, you have to think of it this way. When you're carrying a firearm, Every person that you walk by, you have the ability to take that person's life. Mm. That is a huge and awesome responsibility to handle that gun safely, handle it properly, 
and know what the heck you're doing with that in case, God forbid, you ever have to use it. You kill the intended attacker and not an innocent bystander. Yep. For me and and kind of coming up as a as an instructor, as a parent, you know, I wanted my child to understand that as early as possible. I wanted her to understand how to shoot as early as possible. And I wanted her to understand, you know, how to treat that entire situation. So she was probably 11 or 12 before she ever shot a pistol. Well, she shot a rifle before then, Um, but she was probably 11 or 12 before she shot a pistol. I wanted to make sure that maturity level was there and, and everything. I also want to make sure I had a pistol that would not, you know, scare her and, and create a uh, worse kind of situation. So um, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are, are, are you telling me you didn't put a 357 Magnum in her hand? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, 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 so many stories I have. Go ahead. I know, I know. I know. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I've seen so many things that where people go like, oh, no, shoot this gun. It's a, you know, some big gun. It's somebody who, who you know cannot control that type of right. Rifle. Right. And you just see horrible, horrible things. And so people need to be responsible, like all the way through. Teach your kids early about gun safety. She learned about gun safety uh, very, very early, like Mm -hmm. extremely early. And she knew when when she could not touch a gun and everything else. And then as moving forward, we very slowly and responsibly kind of took on more and more until like she ended up coming up and training with you. Because I remember that. (laughs) I remember she was so nervous when she came up and um, and I told her, I said, Kylie, I have not killed anyone since I retired in 2005. You are not likely to be the first. So just settle (laughs) down. (laughs) She walked over to you and said, that is the last thing I expected to hear in this. (laughs) But I was just trying to break the ice with her. And (laughs) but maybe maybe I need to rethink how I evaluate breaking the ice with someone. (laughs) So, uh, Pepsi products. I love Pepsi. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I know at one point in time you were talking about getting a podcast started. You haven't got anything started yet, have you? I'm not yet, no, Uh, because I'm really working on the Gunfellas and I'm trying to get all the Gunfellas together. uh, And and there's a couple of guys and they're interested, but they have not actually all of them rogered up to do it at a sp- specific time. Gotcha. So that is where I really want to go with the gun fellas. And I'm going to, I'm talking about guys that are may not be well known in the industry, mm-hmm. but I know them and I know yeah. their credentials. I have worked with them and I mean, in the military, so I know who they are and I yeah. know what their credentials are. And um, so I really, I mean, these would be a, a panel of experts. So gotcha. And of course, you would be here as not only just a gun expert, but as a self-defense expert. So, which, by the way, Brian is uh, one of our gun fellows. So we're just trying to really get everything in line before we kind of launch it. So one of our guys is actually uh, out of the country right now doing some work. I'll just leave it that way. And uh, so. Just out of the country on business, huh? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so what steps do you think someone needs to take if they are considering a firearm for a self-defense as part of their self-defense plan? Okay. The first thing (laughs) is take a basic course. I don't care what your experience is. I don't care what your level of experience is. I I have had uh, plenty of guys come through my class. Oh, I was in the military. Uh, So was I pal 23 years, right? I was too. Yeah. So uh, that doesn't mean I can't learn something from a basic course. If you go somewhere and you can't find something good out of out of some type of training, then you're going in with the wrong attitude. Because even in a basic firearms course, which for many people out there would not be basic. For example, right. in our basic firearms course, we talk about plus P and plus P plus ammunition. Yep. And I got guys that say, oh, I've been a cop for 30 years. And what's plus P and plus P plus ammunition? They have no clue what it is. And... And so, you know, even in a basic course, you're going to pick up little nuggets like that. So take a basic course before you start anything. I think even moving forward, you know, I had taken before I come up and started training with you, uh, I, I had trained with some really big names in the industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then in order to be a NRA basic pistol instructor, um, 
you know, I, I came up and I had to take the NRA basic pistol class. And right. I was I was shocked at how much I learned from that very basic pistol class that I did not know beforehand. Because uh, I realized that a lot of my stuff was a lot of like fighting with a gun and stuff right. like that. And there was a lot of the basics and holes in that that I was missing. Um, right. So I think that even if you feel like, and I mean, I was in no way an expert when I started training with you. Uh, mm -hmm. But even if you feel like, hey, you've really got a, you got a good hold on things, going back and taking a basic pistol class, if you've never taken one or basic shotgun or basic rifle or whatever, um, those type things, it helps out tremendously. It does. It does. So, for example, uh, you took my street combat survival course. Yep. Now, I am not going to just take some knucklehead off the street that calls me and says, oh, I know how to shoot a gun and stick them through my street combat survival course because, you know, that's just not going to turn out well, right? Right, right. So, that was a lot of, a lot of moving and shooting and uh, probably one of the most fun class experiences I've had. I'm not going to lie. Well, it, it, God forbid you have to draw your gun out on the street. It's oh, yeah. not like you're standing at a range and you're shooting at a paper target. You're mm -hmm. going to need to be shooting and moving. And Yep. And that's what I try to tell people when, you know, when they come through a concealed carry class. So, like, you know, you need to come back. Or if you don't want to train with me, go train with Tim. Go train with somebody. Uh, you don't train like with somebody that knows what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't. Okay. You might want to edit this out. I don't know, but don't. All right. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> there, are people, there are people out there. <clears throat> Look at some of their videos online because all these people, th th these people that are, that are no good. A lot of them post videos. No, I'll, yeah. I'll put it this way. A lot of great instructors post videos. But a lot of crap, all of the crappy instructors post videos. Let me put <laughs> yeah. it that way, because they're trying to show you cool things that they do. That's going to get you killed out on the range. So or on that, the that works in hand to hand self-defense as well. There's a there's yeah. a few guys out there that's just it's laughable what they're teaching and showing. Right. So, like I said, there are some really great instructors out there putting stuff out on mm. YouTube, stuff like that. Uh, but. You know, and there's really good ones out there. So I'm not, I'm not, please, I'm not denigrating all the good instructors out there doing that. But right. I will tell you, every crappy instructor is definitely doing it. Yep. Pepsi. <laughs> That's the name of this podcast. Go team Pepsi. <laughs> Talk, so what we've gotten to so far is it's everyone's right to own a gun, but not everybody's, not, but not everybody should carry one for self-defense. And not well, everybody. I think not everybody should do it without the training, yeah. without yeah. learning something. No, there are some people yeah. that I just don't think should do it. Yeah, but I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> I'm not. Some people just shouldn't. <laughs> For instance, this guy at our class. Why isn't it working? <laughs> While pointing and this is at why her. whenever I'm teaching concealed carry, they shoot my guns and my ammo. So I don't have people like that doing that unsafe stuff. <laughs> this was on the firing one. Oh. I'm pointing it at her. So, so JD got the uh, opportunity <clears throat> to take a gun away from a six foot two full grown man. You know? Here you go. Yeah. I was like, give me that. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> he got kicked off the firing line and failed the class. So. Did, did you take his knee out at the same time? I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah. It, it, he had he kept riding the slide forward. And I'm like, pull it back, let it go. Yeah. Let's gun do its yeah. job. He kept riding the slide forward. And he goes, I don't uh, understand why it keeps stovepiping. Yeah, really? Yeah. And I was just, yeah. and he goes, why does it keep doing this? Finger on the trigger, starts messing with the slide, pointing at me. I was like, hand me that. <laughs> what I said earlier, how I started it off. Yep. So I started it off. <laughs> What's our next step? So we, we say... You know, you make the decision, you treat it with respect, and then you go and take a basic class. Correct. You take another class after that. And then at least one more for good measure. And no. then you train constantly. Yeah, so you have got to continue <laughs> training with a certified instructor. Yeah. Okay. Because carrying a gun guys is a lifestyle it, it it is not 
something that you go take a class. Now, I, I realize every state's different, and that's the great thing about our country. Some states, we have constitutional carry, which if it's legal for you to own a gun, it's legal for you to carry that gun, right? And that's great, but you still have to know how to use that gun and carry that gun safely. Yep. So it, it is not just taking a class or not, it's just my right. It is your right, and fine, go ahead and do it, but please do it responsibly. And by doing it responsibly, that means training. And training is not, well, I took a class one time. Yeah. When you're out in a street on a, in a gunfight, that basic firearms class that you took is not going to help you. No. Even, even in our state, concealed carry, our concealed carry class is woefully lacking in our state. It teaches you the basics of a handgun, the nomenclature, a little bit about ammunition, How and it teaches you it? the laws, right? It teaches yep. you the laws. Yep. And so nowhere in there does it teach you how to defend yourself with that firearm. And really being mean? able to carry that firearm is only a part of it. Being able to properly defend yourself that's what it's all about. And I just, I don't understand people or the mindset that think I can take an eight hour class, which in our state, that's what it is. Yeah. And then I can go out there and gunfight on the street if I have to. I, yeah. I just, I, I don't understand that, that concept or that thought process. I, I, I completely, completely agree. And let me just say for a moment, and, and this is not really necessarily the subject in which I was planning on for this podcast, but you know, we were talking about the fact that I've known you a little over a year now. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't remember September, October, you know, whenever. Um, and I was a decent shooter beforehand. Enough right. so that I could come in there and take and pass and become a basic pistol instructor. Uh, so, you know, decent shooter there. I have trained with you, I don't know how many times in the last year mm -hmm. and a little few months. Um, but the level of my shooting has jumped much, much higher in that amount of time. And that's just because of regular shoot, regular practice and then regular training with someone who is a very, very good instructor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said, I've trained with a lot of really big names out there, but I've never like consistently trained with a like really, really good instructor. And I think that makes, that made the bigger, biggest difference in my shooting than anything else is getting back up there, giving you loads and loads of my money. And uh, I buy my friends if I have to. Yeah. I, I, uh, <laughs> I am expensive. I'm not a cheap date. I will say that. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, coming up there and, and really training with you, consistently training with you and training with you over and over again, my, my shooting went from, I was a pretty decent shot to, you know, I've shot a little bit competitively and done rather well, for somebody who's never really done that before and just kind of stepped in off the street and decided to go do it. Um, and there's no way if I had tried to do that beforehand, man, I would have sucked it up so bad. It's not even funny. Right. Right. I, I, I got to tell you, and, and I'm not just, you know, I'm not just pulling your chain here, but I think at the end of the last class that we took together, the last training session you did, I was, I think I was telling you how far you have come yeah. and, and how, how, pleased and proud I was of, of, you know, what you have accomplished in, in so short a period of time. I mean, you were running some of those drills in the street uh, combat survival course. You were running some of those drills and I was just amazed at how fluid you were, even, even while moving and shooting, how fluid you were. Mm -hmm. So how'd you like the water bottle drill though? Have you run that? Oh lately? yes. I have made several people <laughs> do that one. They, uh, they, what they, do they think of it? That everybody looks at me the same way I looked at you the first time, which was just what like, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> and then I start doing it, it's like holy crap. And I have one guy tell me he shoots competitively. I, he shoots competitively. And uh and he come in. Now there's another thing. I have a guy who is a competitive shooter who comes to me now for training, and I owe that all to you. Uh, <laughs> well, competitive shooting is a whole different animal from combat shooting. Right. Yeah. And when we're talking about self-defense, I mean, that's combat he's shooting. talking about using some of the things he's learned from me to help his competitive shooting. Right. A lot better. And because um, he does the uh, action pistol type ISP, mm -hmm. IPSC. Ipsic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Okay, good. Glad you do. Uh, 
the girls are looking at me really funny but hey it, you know a lot of moving and shooting and stuff like that <laughs> a lot of moving and shooting stuff like that and target transitions and stuff like that and some of the stuff that you and i worked on you know i worked with him on and he he looked at me the last time he's like man he goes that's really really going to help me the next time i'm shooting competitively yeah and i was like holy yeah. crap you know <laughs> you know because i when, when i heard he was a competitive shooter and he was coming to my class i was really intimidated but um yeah, that consistent, constant training with someone who is a really, really good instructor makes a huge difference. It does. It does. And this is what this is what everyone needs who is carrying a gun. I, I can't stress the responsibility of of carrying a gun out there on the street. I just yeah. I can't stress it enough. I mean, that was a tragedy. What happened on that movie set? It was an absolute unnecessary tragedy. Yep. And I know uh, I saw Jada and she was kind of like, you know, when I said if Alec Baldwin had, uh, you know, taken a course instead of trash the NRA. You probably know that he can't claim he didn't pull the trigger. <laughs> well, of course, locked what, what into place. gets me more than anything, more than absolutely anything, is somebody hands you a gun and tells you it's cold or it's clear or whatever words. They I don't want. even know what cold means, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Freaking check it. Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, freaking check it. You know? You're right. Make you, sure it's it's actually clear. You know. Nobody ever hands me a gun that I don't check. I don't yeah. care who it is. I don't care if you tell me it's clear. I don't give a crap. I don't care who you are. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm going to check it and make sure it's really clear. Yeah. So there's been a couple podcasts that we have recorded that was just like completely lost in the ether one way or the other. It just like dies. But that was something that uh, we had a former student of mine is now a police officer in North Carolina. Um, and, you know, he's done a lot of training. So there's a lot of firearms training, stuff like that. And we were passing guns kind of back and forth. And I made it a point to say, if you'll notice, Every time I check it and I see that it's clear, I hand it over to him. The very first thing he does is check it to make sure it's clear. Yep. Yep. That, Cause that is, that is insanely like important that we are constantly checking because somebody may have missed something. And somebody could be alive today. But look, gun, the gun rules, the gun safety rules are made so that if you break one rule, you're a dumb but nobody's getting hurt. Yeah. But if you break two rules, somebody could die. Yeah. I always love to ask the students, we go over like the gun safety rules and stuff like that. And, and everything I ask everybody, I said, like, how many, how many rules have to be broken for somebody to get hurt? And they said one. And I said, Nope, you at least have to do two or three. Yeah. Yeah. At least two. Yeah. So it, you could do a stupid thing with a gun and nobody get hurt. But yep. when you do two stupid things with a gun, somebody's likely to die. Exactly. So I, yeah, it, you said, I mean, a lot of people would still be alive today if people just followed the basic safety rules. Because if people just, and, and this isn't a gun safety rule, but if people just understood that a safety is a mechanical device that could fail. Yeah. I know, I, I know personally someone locally here that would still be alive. Yeah. Because the person relied on a safety and the safety failed. Yeah. If people and, and again, these are things that you're going to learn in a basic gun class. Yeah. We were doing a we did a video um, on knife versus gun. Mm -hmm. And whenever you are in self-defense range and the person already has a knife, you're likely to get cut. You know, that's uh, right. You're doing self-defense against a knife. You're likely to get cut. And so even though I had the gun and I was backing up. And I had, I still had to get it out and get on target and everything before I could do anything with it. We had a comment online that was like, just put it in your hoodie. You'll get it out faster. I'm over here like, <clears throat> he goes on and comments. He goes, without a holster where you're likely to lose it or it accidentally go off. And he, the person commented, safety. <laughs> and I said, the safety is a mechanical device. Yes, she did. Fail. <laughs> yes, she quoted you on that one. I did. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It oh is. Gosh. We're here like, I can't imagine just shoving a gun in a hoodie and then 
going about my day to day. Do you know how many oh. times I put my phone in my hoodie that my phone falls out? <laughs> Listen, how many people shove it in their pocket? And I'm not talking about with a pocket holster. I'm talking about they just yeah, or their <laughs> or their purse. You, you know, yeah, where the rest a, of the kitchen, and I'm not talking about a concealed carry purse. I'm talking about their purse, oh, I know. you know, where the rest of the kitchen is placed inside of. There was a, there was a lady here at our local Walmart that. Nothing put, good ever happens in a Walmart. I, I know, believe me. Uh, but she, uh, she just had a revolver sitting in her purse and her lipstick got down into the trigger guard. And when she reached into her pocketbook to get her wallet out, it it hit some things and made the made it go off, and it was here at our local Walmart. Uh, just unbelievable, to- unbelievable. Thank God it didn't hit anybody. Yeah, right. But that was just dumb luck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Oh this podcast God. is brought to you by Faith and Freedom T-shirts. Faith and Freedom for all of your spiritual and patriotic T-shirt needs. Faith and Freedom. Check us out online. Faithandfreedomclothing.com. And if you use the coupon code Impact Events, it gives you 15% off of anything that you purchase. All right, guys. So in conclusion, uh, we want to make sure that you are, if you're going to use a gun, this, this is a perfectly, uh, I'm sorry, it's a personal choice. If you want to be that to be a part of your self-defense plan. But if you're going to do that, you need to make sure that first off, that begins with respect to the firearm. OK, from there, you need to make sure that um, where am I going with that? I've already said it. Well, you follow with like training. Yes. Starting with basic training, moving all the way up into defensive training and defensive tactics so that you have practice using a gun under pressure and being able to function under pressure in the first place. If you don't have if you don't handle pressure well, then you're going to most likely miss. <laughs> yeah. Or um, freeze. <laughs> and Tim, we would love to have you back on for another episode of the podcast at some point, if you wouldn't mind doing that. At some point, I will be back. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I think one thing that we might talk about is maybe training with some firearms under pressure, creating a little pressure while you're training firearms, but still doing it safe. That sounds really fun because we'll talk about some judgmental simulator stories. Yes, we will, because we have some of those as well. So Yes, we do. Yep. All right. Well, I guess we will see you guys next time. Thank you very much for listening. Stay safe, stay alert, and we'll see you in the next podcast. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Impact Defense Podcast. If you would like to learn more about how to keep yourself safe, check out the articles, videos, courses, and seminars at www.impactdefense.online. We also do training for security teams, churches, businesses, groups, and more. Stay sharp, stay focused, and train hard. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe I need to make sure I start like Bubba mugs because I use these things all the time. They're huge. (laughs) They are big enough. For me, a cup of coffee. So there would, yeah.